I first do want to thank Mr. Leonsis um, for giving us the the responsibility to be able to kind of lead on a night like this, be able to give us the resource and the guidance for Mike and I to be able to make an imprint on our team. I think the most important thing tonight is we got better. I feel like we're adding some really good pieces to the program. Obviously, there's been a lot going on this week. <laughs> some things that we can't necessarily talk about right now, but we will talk about when the time allows. But I've been really, really impressed with Michael's leadership and his ability to really think creatively, to push us forward in a way where I think we're gonna benefit and, and be on the same page moving forward. So we'll spend more time talking about that. Tonight, I just wanna thank everybody that was in the draft room. Brett, Frank, Johnny, all the scouts, Travis. It was a real team effort. We came together, as you know, in a short period of time and being in that draft room, I didn't feel like we missed a beat at all. We were very well prepared, had a lot of different things coming at us and you couldn't tell that it was our first draft together. So that's probably what I'm most proud about tonight. And I think we got a lot to build on as a staff and that's exciting. But moving forward, we, we invested in some players that we're excited about. Um, I guess I can speak first to Bilal Kule Bali, who we were able to spend a little time with here in DC. He's a guy that is the fourth youngest player in the draft at 18 years old. We're really, really excited. He, we got a player that we targeted and that's important. Uh, he's a useful, athletic, long, growing body, plays two sides of the ball, and he's got a hunger and a passion and a work ethic that you don't see in a lot of young players. If you follow his career, we were able to track him a little bit last year in the summertime playing his U18 for France, and you saw him coming on, coming on. I think during the summer after that, they played against a USA team that actually had some former NBA players, sons on it. I think Bronny was on it. I think Hardaway was on it. And you could see his competitiveness there. And he started the season playing for the Espoir League, the under 21 league in, in France. Just kept playing, kept going, kept chipping away. Scouting was a little different then. I didn't know our staff, but I know our staff was watching him, just reading through the reports. And then I was able to kind of watch him a little bit more. And then during the season, the pro team took a cut. 92 took a couple injuries and he was able to step in and he wasn't afraid. He really attacked it, made his mark on the defensive end and then a player stepped away, they had some injuries and they started putting the ball in his hands. So what some people don't know or you guys might know, he grew six to seven inches in like one summer. So he had guard skills and then became this six, seven long, athletic, lanky guy. And he kept those ball skills and was able to do more on the ball and shot 50% in the playoffs and went from a guy at the beginning of the season who was playing pro A, playing, wasn't playing pro A, playing a spa to starting in the finals in one of the best leagues in, the, in the Europe. So that showed us a lot of growth when we got him here to DC and just talked to him, got to know him as a person. We feel pretty confident he'll continue that trajectory and we're excited to have him. And I will say with Tristan, again, young, 20 years old, he's played internationally. I feel like I've watched him for a long time now since he was a youth as well with him seven feet, skilled, can pass, can shoot. He's played in ACB, has played in Euroleague games. Um, they're just high level competitors and guys that, are, that know how to play basketball. And we're excited to be able to have them in the Wizards program. With Kule Bali. <laughs> uh, we spent some time at dinner making sure I pronounced it correctly. So first thing I did when he called me was pronounce his name correctly, he was excited. <laughs> What can you say about his defensive versatility and his potential on that end of the floor? Yeah, it's the thing that pops out right away when you see the 7'2 length um, for a guard. He's 99th percentile for his position in height. He's 99th percentile in his position for length. And if you take all the measurements and see him run and jump, he's probably 99th percentile on that too. But with that comes an effort. And he's a guy that takes contact, dishes out on offense, but defensively can guard on the ball, guard off the ball. We see him as a guy that can switch and be versatile. And he embraces that. So for us, having a defensive mindset first as a young player, is, it's going to be hard to get on the court, as we know for young guys. But he's got the passion and motivation to be able to get it first on the floor defensively. Well, I'm sure you guys 
see teenagers every day where the, the growth kind of spurt is, is really quick from that 16 to 18. I know he literally had a growth spurt, but what about his kind of ability to step into that bigger role and the growth you saw from him in such a short period of time? Is there something special? Is that kind of normal what you saw, abnormal? Definitely different. Um, you see guys take strides, but when it happens physically and skillfully at the same time, that's a little rare. He hasn't been playing serious professional basketball for a long time, so the French League is a great league. So to see that, it caught your eye. You went back in the beginning of the year, you saw it. I went back end of April, early May, saw it again, and then you see him in workouts and follow him on TV, follow him on the game tape. Then you get him in the gym here and you're like, this is a ball of clay. It could take some time, but from where he went from a short amount of time to where we think he can go, that's the exciting part. And we'll embrace that. We'll put resources around him and try to help him maximize himself. And at the end of the day, he has the physical tools, but he's also a very skilled player. So once that comes together, I think you'll, you'll have the player we're looking for and the reason why we drafted him so high. Do you have a couple areas of growth that are kind of his biggest areas of growth? I would say it's going to take some time just to get used to playing with the physicality of the NBA, like it will with most rookies. Um, seeing him play with the ball a little bit more, we want to definitely explore that through summer league and explore that early on in his career and kind of see where he left off there. So it takes time to get used to the schedule, the grind of the 82 games versus what he was playing there. So normal things for a rookie, but for him, just knowing who he is, he'll, he'll eat that stuff up. Well, one of the things that, that people were saying before the draft about him was that he was very talented, but because he's very young yeah. uh, and hadn't played on that highest stage yet, that the, the development piece might take him a little longer. So I wonder if that kind of fits what you guys are thinking in terms of long-term plays and being able or willing to kind of live with those growing pains over the next couple of years. I think that's a very fair statement. With him, you see what's going on down the line. Um, we won't take short-sighted approaches in the draft. We'll take the guy who we think will be the best long-term player, the best long-term fit. And with him, it's going to take a little while. We know that. And we have the confidence in the coaching staff. And we have the support from ownership to be able to take that approach and make sure that we're not settling and we can go take a risk or go take further time to do something. And with him, it's, it's, we don't feel like it's a risk. We feel like it's a player that can come in and play and just continue to chip away, continue to get better. But his future is much brighter than his current. With a, with a, you guys are new here. And what I, what I mean by that is not a pejorative. I'm not saying Very new. I'm, saying, I'm still using my GPS. No, I know, I know. I, I, it's not a pejorative. What I mean is, um, the fan base is has seen all this turnover and tumult in the la in the last seven days, and they're kind of wondering, okay, well, what's the payoff? And he could be the best player or one of the best players in a couple of years, but the immediacy of fan gratification yeah. may not mesh with that. So how do you kind of weigh yeah. those two things? So yeah, I'll learn the fans and be able to to speak the language here a little bit. But I would say when, when Mike and I were hired, we were spent a lot of time with Mr. Leonsis to talk through what it was look like moving forward. And we were able to kind of declare a path and look at different options. I think a lot of that stuff will come to the light here when we're about, allowed to talk about everything. Mm -hmm. But there is a plan in place. He fits the plan very, very well. I think if you look at the team that we will eventually be able to put on the floor this year, it'll be a team you'll be proud of. I think it'll be a team that'll compete and have the, the substance that we're looking for to help young players play as well. So we'll, we'll surround the guys that we're adding and some of the young guys that we have on our roster right now with good veteran players that will play stylistically the way we want and bring what we want inside the walls as well. So there's a plan in place, we can't talk through it all, um, but there will come a day where we can have those conversations and dig a little deeper on that stuff. Will, did I hear you correctly that he visited Washington and you got to spend some time with him here? Is that, or were you referring to Zoom calls or seeing him? Okay. He, he came through DCA. Yeah, DCA, right? I got it right? Yeah. Right. Right. He came through DCA. He was here. Reagan. National. Reagan National. Reagan National. Old, old people call yeah. National. That was as far. That's what I learned. That was as far. Was as far. <laughs> uh, DCA. He, he came through DCA and spent some time here in uh, Washington, D.C. And when was that? Was that within the last two weeks? It was before the draft, yeah. Well, if he was okay. playing 
up until a week ago. So his season recently ended. Um, so him and Victor and everyone on that team had a tremendous season and made it to the finals of the Pro A League in France. So he, he's been playing for a while. So it had to have been within the last two weeks in part because you've only been here two weeks. That's a very good point. Yeah. I think it's two weeks today, actually. Now that we have that yeah, set up. Two weeks today. <laughs> How do you describe him as a as a person and um, kind of his spirit, his, his competitive spirit? I'm glad you asked that because I should have led with that. Um, the the passion that you see the second you you walk into the gym, he's the guy running around, positive energy. But the time you we walked into the hotel room, picked him up, and then got him in the car. We like to spend like individual time with guys, get him in the car, drive around the city take him to dinner, let him loosen up and get to know us a little bit, but also get to know him. He's a family guy. I think his mom, dad, and two sisters are gonna be here um, this weekend and kind of see DC. He's excited to learn about the city. He comes from humble beginnings. Nothing was handed to him. Um, and we had a real deep conversation on like, what drives you? What motivates you? There's gonna be some setbacks for all rookies. They're gonna be in a different location. Spotlight's gonna be a little brighter here. What's gonna drive you? What's gonna motivate you? What's gonna push you? And are you ready for those things? And his personality is is bring it on. I'm ready for it. And that's what I loved about him. And it's I think it'll fit it very well with the guys in the locker room. He's got an energy, a work ethic, a passion that that connects and hopefully unites the group. What needs to be put in place to ensure that he has the resources and the help to develop to to the degree that he needs to develop? Yeah, I think it'd be the same with every player. We take a holistic approach in, in all that we do. We'll make sure that everything's individualized for all the players we add in, veteran, rookies. Um, it doesn't matter. We'll make sure that we put them in the best situation when they're taking care of the bodies, the type of food they need to eat, the specific weight training program that they need to be on. We'll make sure that they're spending time dealing with um, a specific plan on the court, but also off the court, making sure that he's getting acclimated into the city, his family, and those things of that nature. So. It, it's not just on the court things, and we have the people in place and the resources in place to make sure that we can do that. I guess uh, with Vucevic, is that someone that you think will be a stash this upcoming year, or you guys will bring him over for a summer league or potentially the season? TBD on that one. Um, I've watched him probably longer than I watched Bilal, and I have a really good relationship with his agency. So we'll get that figured out. I do know that he'll be in Washington, D.C. for a little bit, and we'll get to see him and let him feel the gym in the area, and we'll let those conversations take care of himself. But I will say that he's excited to be here. Wild enough, he was still playing as well. These guys are playing high-level competition, and he won the championship tonight. So his team was able to win um, ABA championship now. I think he's in the ABA. I went and saw him in the EuroLeague. And then I went and saw him. I didn't see the ABA championship. That was obvious tonight. But I gave him a call. Obviously, you can imagine how late it is over there. They were still celebrating. And he was just filled with emotion, filled with joy, and happy to be selected and be a Washington Wizard. So that, that kind of hit me a little bit. So that was fun. And then obviously, you guys made a move to move up a spot. I guess just what's the intel that you guys are getting live and in the moment to say that, hey, OK, this is something that we need to do to be aggressive and get our guy? Yeah, I'd say information comes from a lot of different sources. There's a lot of people in there that are connected and that do a good job of making sure that we're prepared and we have information. You'll see with Michael and I, we're gonna be aggressive. If we want our guy, we're gonna go get our guy. And tonight we're able to do that. All right, got one final question. We're still learning you and how you kind of process a person's potential, but yeah. Do you agree with the statement that his ceiling is very high, but his floor is very low? Or is that too simplistic way to look at this? Yeah, we don't look at it that way. I would say that every player starts off at the same spot. On draft night, whoever got picked one to whoever got undrafted is signing a two-way contract. Their season is starting in Vegas or Salt Lake or Summer League, wherever they're going. And from there, their potential is, is on them. So... There's a lot of guys who are similar in talent, but the guys that are able to maximize that and buy into the resource are the guys that succeed. And we're gonna make sure that we put a plan in place for every player that walks in the building to use those resources, have those resources, and become the best player they can be. And for him, he's so young, he's, he's skilled, he's competitive, he's a worker, 
he's already showed he's going to be on a trend like this. We don't use ceiling and floor. We just don't put restraints on anyone. Give them the keys to be their best selves and hope for the best. And if you're doing it intentionally, which I think we will, and I think he will, you'll have a good outcome. Do you know exactly when he came up to Metropolitans for good? Say that again? Do you know when Metropolitans came Oh, up? for good? For good, yeah. Um, it might have been closer to January, February, when he started playing in the rotation a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on that one. Right. But I believe it was Traymont Waters left the team. Hugo Basson got injured. And that's when he started playing a lot more. And he wasn't playing as much with Net 92. So it was probably December, but the real minutes started coming towards January, February. And then towards the playoffs, he was starting and finishing games and playing with the ball. And you got to see the glimpses that you saw from time to time, the stuff you saw when he was 18. And you're like, okay, he's doing that against grown men in a real league. It might take some time, but it's going to be worth it. I just wanted to know what the day was like for you, Will. You're in a different room. You're working under a crunch time. I'm sure you, you aren't used to. To be honest, it, it felt like normal. Mike and I have been together in draft rooms together. Right before it started, we just were sitting next to each other going, all right, what do we do? What's step one? What's step two? And we just stopped and paused. And we're like, how cool is this? <laughs> this is pretty cool. We're back together. Like, let, let's do our best and, and represent for the Washington Wizards. And you had that little moment, little embrace, and then it was like, lights back on. We've done it. I've been fortunate to be in 16 drafts now. Mike's probably been in a few more than that. Um, and I got to give a lot of credit to the people in the room. It was a bigger room than I was used to in terms of people, but the quality of work that was being produced ahead of time and in real time and the setup from Kevin setting up all these big TVs and boards and making a room out of nothing that they probably haven't had before here in Washington. We were like, hey, this is our brain. This is what we want to see. And they were able to put it down like, I can't say enough about the staff tonight and putting us in a position to be successful, but I do look forward to getting home and, and getting into the bed. It has been a long few days, but I think you guys should get some rest as well. Just for you setting the draft board, I guess, how recently did that, you know, firmly stay in place? Was that, you know, up until yesterday changing or is that something that was, you know, firmed up a few days ago? If I'm being honest, it was firmed later than I normally would, but I think with all, um, that was going on, I think it made sense with us just coming in two weeks ago and trying to play catch up on a few different things. Travis and I traveling and making sure we're just seeing guys, touching guys. So it was a little later than we would have wanted, but at the end of the day, it came down to just some tweaks and making sure that we got to touch the guys. Because as you said, that's what really drives it. A lot of these guys are similar in talent. This was a very deep draft at the top and through the lottery. And you just got to bet on the person, bet on the people and bet on your environment. So. Spending time, getting them extra zooms, like that stuff mattered. And all those touch points were allowed you to tweak here and there and then get better information. But for the most part, we were prepared, but it's never really done until it's done. I'll say that. <laughs>